Tonight, we're diving into a question that's as old as science fiction, but feels more relevant than ever. Take us to your leader. With the U.S. government acknowledging the possibility of alien encounters, we're left wondering, who would we take them to? Would it be our elected officials, visionary thinkers, or the unsung heroes quietly guiding us from the shadows? So tonight, here at Beauchamp, Let's meet the leaders who shape our world and could be the ones we choose to represent us if that moment ever comes. Hello and welcome to Take Us to Your Leaders. I'm here with Mr. Jonathan Eaglin, the most famous man on the planet. Now, Mr. Eaglin, if you had one word to say to any of the aliens out there, what would it be? Leave leave why i have not seen a single movie wherein aliens land on this planet and it ends well so honestly if they land here they need to leave I et just, that didn't end well either mm. all that candy ended up on the ground you know that was originally supposed to be skittles or m&ms and both of those companies turned them down and ended up being reese's pieces Reese's pieces are probably They're one of the best. Candy far out superior. There. Oh, seriously. Far superior. Can't have them on campus though, because one of you is weak and can't handle nuts. Yeah. Anyway, where is this interview going? So, Mr. Eaglin, today the premise of this is we want to get to know more about you, but not Administrator Eaglin or Jonathan Eaglin. We want to know about you as a person. As difficult as that's going to be for you <laughs> to talk about your feelings as a human being and as a man, how's your day going? My day is, um, it's going. <laughs> My day is going. It's going? <laughs> Testing is kind of rough. I thought, I thought you rough. said we can't say that word anymore. You're right. I am having like flashbacks. I can't hear the word test anymore and not have a flashback in my mind. Like I, all I see is like dust and dust storms and dirt and, and rough and tumble stuff every time I say the word test. So, so let's get into that immediately. Mm -mm. Um, just what's the difference between <laughs> what's the difference between testing today, where you are now in your life, versus testing when you were just a simple algebra teacher? Well, first off, algebra teachers aren't just simple, but yeah, I get what you're saying. But testing has actually changed a staggering amount over the last few years. It used to be this idea that you know you went in, you told people what you knew, and you went home. Now it's everything, and in, uh, I imagine a few people are going to see this, but I really don't care. We really need to get rid of it. It it, it needs to go the way of the dodo because nobody has ever won anything from testing. You heard Ever. that here, folks. So if you turn 18 and you're able to vote, to vote, vote against it. Vote against it. Vote against it. Because I don't. I've never met a single person no. other than one person in my life, and that is you, that enjoys testing to the fullest of his ability. Nobody wins. Nobody. You know who does win? Who? Government. Mm, they always win. The government. Which one? China. Anyway, anyway. Mr. Eaglin, <laughs> tell me about yourself. What do you, what do you do here at Beauchamp as an administrator? I know a lot of people come to you for hundreds of different reasons but what is on paper what do you get paid for I do a lot of different things but effectively I'm supposed to pick up anything that falls through the cracks from the other three administrators so I've done everything from discipline to scheduling to um, finances uh, that was a large part of the job was to control some of the title one money um, I really pick up everything. A lot of the stuff I end up doing kind of, end up, kind of ends up being uh, technological. So anytime there's some sort of computer shortfall or a camera or the, the, like the stuff in the hallways, uh, network or something like that, a lot of it, if it affects the office, ends up being my problem. And I have no problem with that because computers are a lot easier to talk to than people sometimes. So I'll, I'll play with a computer for two or three hours versus a, you know, a person may get old after about a minute. <laughs> so it just depends on the I know, person. I, I, I get that. Um, so let's go take a little jump over here. Did you know 
um, when you were younger that this is what you were going to be doing? Or did you think you would be doing something completely different from this? This career came about, uh, I was probably in my second year of college and I switched. I was originally a chemical engineer and uh, got out of that degree track and got into education and finished in general ed and then went on to get a master's. But um, there's a few things that kind of happened along the way. I, I got to see through some other jobs, I got to see the other side of the equation, what happens when young people aren't educated. And I didn't like it. And so I wanted to be on the side that made sure that more young folks were educated so that they could stay off of the streets, out of the jails and out of coffins. Because uh, after you see that a few times, you just don't want to see it again. And I'd rather be part of the solution uh, than having to clean up the problem. So um, I ended up on this side of it. Are you happy with the decisions you've made? Most years, yeah. Most Mo years? Most, most of the time, yeah. Because that I get to see people like, like you that I've watched from freshman year that grow up to be men or, or young women that grow up to be these wonderful young ladies that are going to impact our society for the best and it's it's usually a very rewarding thing but there are very very bad days such as testing <laughs> you, you know i mean no, yeah, no, no. nobody is okay right now like yeah. nobody is okay but other than that yeah i i like i like where i'm at uh i can see where i'm going and um yeah i, I think it was a decent decision that's awesome um yeah. so did you know that Wait, I, we talked before a little bit about this interview. Mm -hmm. You told me that you were born in 1955. That would make you 69, 69 years, years old. old. I have been around for a minute. You have, and I mean, let's let's be honest, you look great. You don't look like 69. I don't feel great though. I feel 69. Do you? My do. grandpa just turned 60 and yeah. he could use whatever you got. I, Let's I'm, say it that way. I'm just blessed. I'm I'm absolutely blessed. There was a. Um, I I read that for the first yeah. time and I was like, he's joking. Yeah, like I, I feel blessed. Hard hardcore. Oh, he's yeah. joking. Oh. So. <laughs> I'm worried now. <laughs> but, but no, I, I just uh, I, I I call it a blessing. Uh, some people call it a curse. Um, the the picture that I keep on my wall covered up that's aging for me would probably call it about you know neutral, but you know. Yeah. So, in all of your years of experience, being a, a teacher, a chemical engineer, uh, every little job that you've done, do you think in the grand scheme of things that as, as students we should branch out and try different things or find oh, yeah. something that we're good at and stick to that? That's the thing. You won't find what you're good at until you branch out because very few people know what they're good at immediately you typically have to fail once or twice to figure out mm, can't do that again and then you find out what you're doing for, for me that uh, luckily occurred in college before i started a long-term career and i realized i like chemistry i like science but at the same time I, I realized there was a difference between liking something and being passionate about it or between being good at something or being great at something and so one of the uh, the old saying is the enemy of the great is the good so you might be good at something, but you really need to find what you're great at. And I certainly hope that's this career for me. I certainly hope that I've found what I'm great at, what I'm best at. Um, because other than that, the next 21 years until retirement is going to be wild. But um. So, okay, <laughs> let's, let's go from that. 21 years till retirement. How long have you been uh, being a teacher, including your, your shadowing as a teacher, not being officially a teacher? So I think 12 or 13 years full-time, then I did a year or two as a sub and then of course there's all kinds of your student teaching so it's and even before that I, um, I serve as youth pastor and preacher for my local church so I've always been in a teaching capacity or uh, started teaching kids when I was like 14 so it's it's, it's been decades of this so um, and, and doubling back to what you mentioned earlier about trying a little bit of everything because I did some education unofficially through a religious program is kind of how I realized, okay, this might be my thing. Yeah. You know, when you're 14, 15, you start realizing that, you know, there's this wonderful moment where when you're teaching younger people anything and their faces light up and they get it, that's special. And, and that carried over into the algebra class or even out to the drone class where a, a kid sits there and just says, oh, 
and that that can't be bought with money like there's no salary on the planet that is ever going to be worth watching someone have a light bulb go off where their eyes get big and they say okay yeah i finally understand why two plus two equals five and it's just it's a great <laughs> feeling it's a great feeling so we know that you you enjoy doing what you do you have enough experience to know what you're doing correctly i hope you hope we hope um we don't really talk about your family as much um i would like to first congratulate you twins um mm -hmm. and you have a, a third child correct yes so three kids uh two of them are, are newborn twins mm -hmm. how old are they five months five months five months I it's happening quickly yeah no i thought it's it was like there. two months oh, no, it's going so quick so. to hear that do you do you have any plans as to let them go to public school or private school or homeschool them or do you know if you want to raise them um not not necessarily raise them do you want to teach them differently than how you teach here at the school or in your church or do you think that your method of teaching is like a, a, a all savior all grace kind of thing they're they're growing up in a completely different world than i grew up in because i've gotten old so yeah. i i have to at least recognize that they're not growing up in the same environment i am so i have to adapt um the oldest one sylvester named after his grandfather and great great grandfather um sylvester's already enrolled for august into a public school now it is a charter school but it is a public school um, i do believe in the power of the public education system um, especially when they're they're funded right and they're ran cor run correctly um, as far as any kind of eventual homeschooling i highly doubt it but um I want them to know that no matter what kind of school they go through, it doesn't matter what the grades look like or it matters about character. I want those high grades, but I want my son one day to be a man that people respect, even if he's got no fancy degree or letters behind his name. I need him to be a respectable and productive member of society. Somebody that, you know, when he shakes their hand, they know, yeah, I can trust him. That's more important to me than the grades. I like both, but I like the firm handshake and the trust and a grown man to be a grown man more than anything. And the same thing for my two twins. I have a boy and a girl, um, like I said, five months old, and I like them to grow up to just be good people because that's in rare supply nowadays. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's very rare to find somebody that you can just trust. It's, yeah. And that's, that's a shame, but it's the world we live in. So, so to kind of wrap this all up, um, first officially as... A senior, I know you You mentioned before that you uh, basically watched me grow up during my, my high school years. Biggest difference between freshman me and, and senior me? Facial hair. Facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. No, it's been a lot of fun to watch, um, to, to watch you kind of grow up the last few years. Um, just you're more aware of where you are mentally, and that takes a lot, especially as a man nowadays to know where you are mentally and psychologically because for hundreds of years, men were just told, shut up and eat your emotions. And I'm proud of any man that's able to realize I am not okay and I need to tell somebody. And I am I am very proud of men who do that. Um, so it's it's been fun to watch you just come into your own and recognize I, I gotta take care of my mind as well as everything else. And uh, there's a bunch of other seniors this year that I'm, I'm gonna miss. That, it's going to be hard to see them go when they leave next Tuesday and Wednesday, or some of them are actually leaving today because they don't have finals, which is kind of wild. So hang out with them this afternoon at the little after school event we have. But uh, graduation every year is a little rough because you, you realize that, yeah, this kid that I love like my own kid, I'm probably never going to see again. Yeah. And, and, you know, social media takes care of some of that because you kind of get to watch their lives and then to grow up the next few years and they start having kids of their own and it's, Social media helps, you know, to, to watch them, but something about not seeing those kids in the hallway every day will kind of mess with you. So uh, graduation is, is, it's bittersweet. It's very rare that we ever have a graduation where I'm like, y'all need to get out of here. I don't, I'm not gonna miss anyone. It's, it's <laughs> was, the, been, was there one like that? It's been a long time, but there was a, there was a class, I will not say which one, and it's been a while. I know this class. There I, I was a class I guess that I just didn't connect with, but, um, I, I really can't tell you what there was no particular incident that occurred it was, was just, it the I, class of 22 
No, okay. it was it was back in the okay. teens. It was, oh. it was back some some years ago. I just did not connect with them. But I mean, you won't connect with everybody. But there was one class. Yeah, it just didn't quite click. But other than that, I've been the last several classes for the last six years or so we've graduated from Beauchamp. All of them have just been winners. It's been a lot of fun to watch y'all graduate and grow up. So you get asked this question every year. Who's your favorite, you know? Which is your favorite? Are we your favorite? Yeah. I don't want to ask you that. I don't, I really don't. What I want to ask you is, which class has given you the most anxiety whenever you watch them walk across stage? As far as worrying about their future? As, or? as far as worrying about the world. Ooh. Who do you think is going to, to cause the most chaos in uh -huh. our class? Ooh. And why is Blaze Barra number five, top five on that list? I will not comment <laughs> on that. I will not comment <laughs> on that at all. No, e even even for somebody <laughs> as happy-go-lucky as Blaze, it, it, it baffles my mind. That dude's a trained lifesaver. Even he is. somebody that, as that's goofy something as that, Blaze, that he is a trained I first a responder. Lot. I've watched him save lives before when the, that little accident occurred last year at the football game. Yeah. Blaze was one of the first people out at that ditch helping that little girl. Yeah. He was one of the people who put down the markers for the helicopter to come in. Like Blaze was on his A. Blaze, Blaze knows he really what was. he's doing. And I but. think I think that secretly he's smarter than all of us. Probably. And, and he just Probably. hides it so nobody will bother him. That he doesn't know how to hide it. It's hard. It's hard to hide that much IQ. It is. It but is. All that being said, I, I don't know of anybody who's going to give me anxiety this year walking across the stage. I think you all will be okay. Yeah. I, I, now, a few of you may need to learn, ladies especially. Please practice if you're going to be wearing heels for graduation. Start practicing today so that you don't look like Bambi walking across the stage. <laughs> just, 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 just start practicing walking in your heels. But no, y'all will be fine. I, I really think this class will be fine. The last, like I said, six or eight have been really fun to watch. So, two more questions, and then we can sign it off. One, how much money would it cost for me to wear a Santa hat or some sort of funny apparel during graduation? Well, the answer to that question, uh, you'd have to be able to fund my early retirement um, pretty much from here on out the rest of my life. So we're, we're talking, you know, there's probably two commas in that price tag. So, you know, mm. just saying. So could I buy you a chicken McNugget and we call it even? For a chicken McNugget, I tell you what, you can wear Santa socks. Deal. Wait, can we do that? Chad, where's that? Chad! Can we, can we wear Santa socks at graduation? Am I allowed to? Can we wear the Santa to socks? To about the I want to. <laughs> Um, I, I think the socks actually might be part of the dress code too. I, think I wouldn't you have to it. wear black or blue socks. Actually, really? I think about. It. I think you have to. We'll, 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 we'll look into. We'll it. look into we'll it. Look anyway, into it. final piece of advice. Last words you want class of twenty twenty four to hear. What are they? Mr. Eaglin loves you, and even once you graduate, just remember that we weren't just here for your academics. We were here for you. If you need something, you come find us. And if we can't fix it, we'll find somebody that can. But Mr. Eaglin loves y'all all, so y'all have a good one. And Mr. Eaglin also said that he will add everybody back on Facebook in the next five hours. So everybody go friend him on Facebook. I will add you on social media after the graduation <laughs> ceremony. After gradu It is wild because every year for the past decade, decade and a half, Every year, right after graduation, my phone just beep, 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 because all of a sudden all these seniors are like, okay, he said he'd add us now. And so most of my friend list on Facebook, yes, I'm old. Most of my friend list on Facebook and even Instagram is all graduates. Do you have an Instagram? I do have an Instagram. It's not under my name. It'd be very hard for you to find, but you it's mostly just the food I make. <laughs> All it is is food. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that remind me, I completely jumped over that topic. Quick, give me a uh, 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 run me through a very fast and brief way to cook the perfect steak. Go. Which cut? Yeah. Uh, 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 New York strip. New York strip. Um, I'm gonna put that on the grill just because I can. I'm gonna put that over some hickory chunks on the grill, fast seven to eight hundred degrees, sear both sides. Rotate 45 to 90 degrees, put the sear marks back on it, then put it off the direct heat, let it sit over to the side, come up to about 130 for my liking, pull it off the heat, let it rest five minutes, slice against the grain, serve with a... Uh, 
Ooh, what kind of sauce do I want to put that with? You're going to put sauce on it? I am going to put that a little sauce on it. You didn't even season it. it. There's no, 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 no pepper. There's no this salt. Is not, this is not going to be straight out of the jar sauce. This is going to be something like a roasted garlic and Parmesan creme that I'm going to put over the top of this steak. Or maybe I'll turn it into steak au poivre and just put large kernels of peppercorns across the top of the steak. Chad knows what I'm talking about. Chad ran a steakhouse for years. He knows what I'm talking about. Compare the, put that with some uh, uh, grilled asparagus, maybe wrapped in bacon. If I bring you a steak and my old smoky today, will you grill me a, sna a steak? You messed up when you said old smoky. Please. Can't help you. Can I, can, if I bring you a steak and a George Foreman grill, and you, ma you're making it worse. <laughs> I want a steak. To <laughs> bring me a steak. I will pay like for it. I will pay for the hickory chips. I will pay for the gas. I will pay for the seasonings. I will pay for the. the I tell the, you what. The when, you when you graduate, when you graduate, you're invited to go to the steakhouse by yourself. <clears throat> Everybody, I'd like to say thank you for stopping by with us. This has been an awesome and extraordinary experience. And for all the aliens out there, this is our leader, Mr. Jonathan Eaglin. They need to go home. They do. They need to go home. This is not the year for aliens, Michael. I swear. It really aliens, isn't. If 2024 is not the testing, year. Your boy is going ballistic. It cannot come interrupt. <laughs> what kind of test irregularity is that, Chad? Invaded by aliens during leap testing. Um, the, the, state, <laughs> right. the state probably would still tell us to continue. <laughs> they probably would. The state would be like, you need this to graduate. You need this leap to graduate. Doggone the aliens. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Eaglin. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Cut.